The story of methane, and this is like a little intermission. If, I, if we're okay, I just want to tell you this story because it's one of the most remarkable stories that's come across to my attention in the last year or so on this topic. Here is some methane being emitted, flared from uh, oil refining sites. And you remember, here's our molecule of methane, the 31 gigatons of methane which is emitted every year. So methane, remember, is more warming than CO2, but breaks down quickly. So fast action here would dramatically slow global heating because methane is so short-lived. Now, the UN said last year that a cut of just 45% in methane emissions by 2030 would, in and of itself, reduce global warming by 0.3 degrees. Um, and it actually looks likely that as of December last year, just a few weeks ago, we're not going to get 45%, we're going to get an 80 to 90% cut. This was promised or pledged by um, a set of the largest oil producing countries and companies at COP28 in Dubai just a few weeks ago. What's going on? So methane emissions are therefore both a grave threat and a golden opportunity. This is the low-hanging fruit of this whole uh, climate crisis tackling because fixing this problem needs no new technology whatsoever and not even that much investment. Let me explain. Do you remember our chart here where we saw the methane was concentrated in just three areas? Um, this one is essentially landfill site. This one at the bottom is the cows I was talking about. Uh, well, among other things, but mostly the cows. I'll talk, this is a story about fuel production, okay? Um, and the methane that is emitted here. This is an oil well in Alberta, Canada, and it is emitting methane. Can anyone see it? Well, you, I can tell you, you can't because methane is famously invisible to the human eye. But under a modified form of infrared, it is visible. And here you can see it escaping at the base of this oil well, essentially just because the oil well is imperfectly maintained. Um, yeah. And so here's a story. This is the Sentinel-5P satellite launched by the European Space Agency as part of their Copernicus program. And um, here it is in a low Earth orbit analysing the atmosphere with, you guessed it, an infrared camera. And the amazing thing here, this satellite was, came on stream in 2022 and since then has been scanning the atmosphere and here's the really interesting thing, publishing, live streaming what it sees. Um, it's courtesy of the European Space Agency and a satellite company called Kairos. And this is what it sees. Here is a methane leak escaping from uh, probably an oil well. And you can see roads. This is the human habitation. You can see the buildings here. So this is the important thing here is the, the resolution. It's down to 60 metres uh, and the sensitivity down to 500 kilograms an hour. And that means it can resolve individual wellheads Here's a few more in an oil field in some desert region. And that means that over the course of its first year doing this, it tracked over a 1,000 of these so-called super emitter events. And we can see where they are and who's responsible. So first off, actually, first off, we can pat ourselves a little bit on the back. The North Sea is looking pretty good here. The Americans are a bit naughty. The Russians have been quite naughty. Um, actually, these blue, by the way, these are uh, not to do with oil and gas at all. These are to do with those landfills I mentioned. Uh, and that's a different story we can pick up. These are all in three countries, actually. Um, but here's, this is definitely worth a piece of chocolate. Does anyone know this country? Turkmenistan, sir. <laughs> you earned it. It is Turkmenistan. <laughs> Congratulations. There you go. Uh, and there is President uh, Serdar Berhamudahiyev, 
at his inauguration, inauguration ceremony last year. Turkmenistan is the world's most... And apologies for there are any Turkmen in the audience tonight. It's not my intention to embarrass... Actually, it is. That's exactly my intention, because um, there is Turkmenistan at the top of the global league table of naughtiness when it comes to... Method. So if you, like me, had one eye on COP28 in December and were wondering how those oil men had found it in themselves to reduce methane emissions by 80 to 90% by 2030. This is why. It's, it's a gotcha. It's because of tables like this, published in The Guardian and other prominent newspapers. Um, and so it's technology, the internet, satellites, naming and shaming, producing really quite remarkably quick action. Okay. <laughs> 